far to the south in the desolate fortress of Machiris. John the Baptist was still held captive, but even there he had heard of the acts and deeds of Jesus, the man whom he had called the Lamb of God. And when two of his followers came secretly to his cell, John begged them to go to Jesus and ask if he was truly the one who was to come. And obedient to John's request, they undertook the long, arduous journey. Northward they traveled, across the hot, bitter salt shores of the Dead Sea, up the fertile valley of the Jordan, skirting Samaria, coming at last to the Sea of Galilee. Through Canareth they journeyed, Tiberias, Magdala, and at last they came to Capernaum. Do you believe that I am able to do this? Let it be done to you according to your faith. Rabbi, we come from the man, John the Baptist. He is imprisoned at Machiris. But he has no fear. His spirit is as strong as ever. He sent us to ask a question of you. Ask what you will. He said, seek out the Nazarene, and when you have found him, ask him this. Are you he who was to come, or shall we look for another? Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who takes no offense at me. We will tell him, Master. Word for word, as you have told us. Who are those two? Followers of a prophet called John the Baptist. Prophet? A wild man clad in skins, dining on locusts and wild honey? I've heard it said that he was sincere, devout. Huh. Ranting, raving madman. Enough. What did you go into the wilderness to behold? A reed shaken by the wind? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, those who are gorgeously apparelled and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face who shall prepare the way before thee. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist. But to what shall I compare the men of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, we piped to you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come, eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. Now you are hearing the truth, real truth. Not the half-truths of men. Men who would weigh us down with a yoke of a thousand laws. Laws that we cannot understand. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden, light. While the master continued with his mission, his disciples, by two and two, were imparting his teachings to the people of Israel, Thaddeus and James the Less. 
Bartholomew and Thomas, bringing word of a new concept of God's kingdom, of a kingdom in which the living spirit of God ruled by love. They spoke to men of every class and station, to the rich as well as to the poor, to the proud and to the humble, asking not the value of a man's purse, but the worth of his spirit. And the truths that Jesus had taught them, they taught to all who received them, explaining as the master had explained, patient as he was patient with them, eager to share with all men the story of God's love as they had learned it from Jesus' lips. They were plain men, able to speak simply to plain people. The first missionaries of Jesus, they spoke on the streets and in the homes, in the language the humble understood. And as the master had commanded them, they ministered to the sick, the lame, the afflicted. That's the way my father taught me to make a splice. They never lose a net if you make a splice like that. All that you and Peter say sounds wonderful, Andrew. <laughs> Too wonderful, I'm afraid. If earning a place in God's favor is as simple as you say it is, why do the scribes and Pharisees trouble themselves with a thousand rules? Mm -hmm. God's rules are simple. It's man's misunderstanding that's made them complex. Oh, yes, but... But surely those who have devoted their lives to following the law and, and every twist of the law should stand first before the Almighty. Oh, Jesus tells us that all men shall be judged by their sincerity, not by their acts. He said that the kingdom of heaven will be like this, a net cast into the sea, gathering fish of every kind. We can pull in our nets and separate the good from the bad. Just so will God's angels separate the men, you, me, the scribes, the Pharisees, the whole catch. The good, they'll save. The evil, they'll cast away. It'll be as simple as that. Far to the south, John the Baptist's messengers returned to the grim fortress of Machiris on the desolate eastern shore of the Dead Sea. Unharmed, Master? Oh, yes, I am quite safe, quite safe, for the time at least. The whole castle is busy with preparations for Herod's birthday feast. I've been completely forgotten. But now tell me, the Nazarene, did you find him? And what did he say? We saw him at Capernaum. With a great crowd around him. Some sick, some crippled, some blind. And others, scores of others, who follow him from town to town, just to hear his voice. For the first wine, the Damascene. The light Damascene, spiced, of course. Then, I think, the red Bithynian. Then, with the roasted meats, that purple Cyprian. The Romans always love it. No, 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 you fool. Put the incense up there, close to Claudius' chair. He adores the scent. His villa at Capua reeks of it. Ha! Ah, well, what do you think? Have I neglected anything? Nothing trivial. Well, I should hope not. Every detail is important tonight. Not only will all my chiefs be here, but the senator from Rome as well. So you have said repeatedly. He is close to Tiberius, very close. If he speaks well of me when he returns to the capital... And do you think one banquet is going to keep him from telling him the truth? That your subjects jeer you, revile your name, threaten open revolt, and all because of one man... Oh, that again. Yes, again. And again and again until you destroy him. You, you, put the taper over there. That corner's blacker than a tomb. Every hour you let him live, the less the people fear you. Spare him another week, even another day. I have no time for it now. My guests are coming. I must see to a hundred things. See to your crown, your kingdom. See what you're about to lose because you fear one man. I do not fear him. You fear his God. I... I must prepare for the senator. A God 
Unable to release him from his chains, the guard powerless to open the dungeon door. Oh, how Tiberius will laugh when the senator tells him that you fear one unarmed follower of such a god. Enough silence. Wait. See that the Princess Salome is prepared to dance for my guest tonight. My daughter dance for your wine-drenched guests. It is my order. I command it. Salome. Stay in your quarters tonight. Do not leave them. But the Tetrarch ordered You me. are my daughter, not his. Do as I say. It was his thought, not mine. He thought his guests would be flattered if a princess danced for them. The whole country ready to rise because of one man he's too superstitious to execute. And all he thinks of is to flatter his guests. Do you know why he fawns on the Emperor's minions? Because he counts on Roman legions and Roman interests to protect him. He is of the Herodian line, but we aren't, not you and I. But surely they would guard us. Guard us? Why, I would be the first one blamed. The woman the Baptist reviled as the symbol of wickedness? I'd be a scapegoat thrown to the mercy of the mobs. And you with me? No, Mother. Go to him. Plead with him. No. No, I'd go to him as far as I dare. But there might be one way. If you did dance tonight, and your dancing pleased him, he would be sure to offer you a reward. A gift is a token of his pleasure. And in the presence of such important guests, he would be eager to appear more than generous. He might even offer you your choice of gifts. No. No, Mother. You must. You must. Many who followed you now follow him. But none are certain whence he draws his powers. Do you know, Master? Once before, near the Jordan, I was asked this question. My answer is still the same. No one receives anything except what is given him from heaven. As for the people turning to him, so be it. So be it. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom rejoices in the bridegroom's voice. And therefore, this joy of mine is now full. He must increase. I must decrease. Oh, now it is long past time for you to go. I have endangered you holding you this long. Oh, the danger oh, we are not there. afraid, Master. You have done well. Extremely well. Now I know a greater peace than I have ever known. May the grace of the Lord be with you. And with you, Master. You, Master. and be rewarded for having given enjoyment to my honored guests. You have pleased us. Now it is my pleasure to please you. Name your reward, one worthy of a princess of the Herodian house. Your majesty has been so generous to me already. Come, speak up. 
Your choice of the jewels in my coffer, a villa of your own beside the new palace. Ask me for whatever you wish and I will grant it. I... I know not what to say, Majesty. <laughs> Take time. Think what you most desire. And on my oath as Tetrarch, whatever you ask me for, I will give it to you. Even to half my kingdom. Go back. Demand his gift before he changes his mind. But what shall I ask? And indeed, we are of the same blood. My half-brother Philip is her father, and we are both direct descendants of my father, Herod the Great. Aha! Uh -huh. So you made up your mind so quick? Yes, Majesty. Then speak, and on my oath your desire shall be yours. What shall it be? I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Officer of the guard. Put the prisoner John to death by the sword and bring his head to me. What woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin I lost. Even so, I tell you, there is great joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Master, Master, do you remember us? The men sent to me by John the Baptist. Yes, and welcome. We have come to be your followers, Master. We and these three who have journeyed with us, they were his followers, too. Were? He... He was beheaded by order of Herod Antipas. We carried the body to a tomb. Now, now we would follow you. It is as I said. No greater man was ever born of woman. Their first missionary journeys completed. The Twelve returned to Capernaum where Jesus welcomed them. Now that we're all together again, I have news that John the Baptist is dead. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen a greater prophet than John the Baptist. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Reports of Jesus' fame were spreading throughout the land even to the ears of Herod Antipas. The hour grows late, my lord. Have you an appointment with the dawn? I, I have no wish to sleep. No? 
I thought you'd be exhausted. You've slept so little the past weeks. Tossing, turning, muttering in your sleep. I've had bad dreams. Hideous dreams. Was that the messenger from the coast? Oh. What gossip had he from Caesarea? None. He came from the Decapolis. He brought reports on a man, Jesus, a rabbi from Nazareth. Things must be dull in Galilee. That's all the news he had to tell. It is said he speaks with the voice of the Lord. Wipes away the plague with the touch of a finger. Has authority over demons that possess the insane. Oh, really, my lord? And he says that all these tales are true. Well, then he's either a fool or a liar. He is no fool and he would not dare lie to me. The people think the man Jesus is a prophet reborn, Elijah walking the earth again. Or Jonah or Jeremiah. Samaritan folklore. Old wives' tales to frighten children. Perhaps, perhaps. Yet he said another is coming. He said? Who said? The man whom I had killed. John, they call the Baptist. Another shall come after me, he said, far mightier than I, with power and judgment of the Lord. John claimed he was sent by God. But his God could not save him from the executioner's sword. Surely that proves he was no holy messenger. And that the God whom he called Almighty had no power to... Enough, enough. It may have been God's will that John should die. Why must you interpret everything as the will of John's God? The God of a conquered people, the God whom only the Jews worship. I am a Jew. My father was ruler of all Israel, I... But you were of the Idumean line, not Israelite. Raised in Greece and Rome, given a worldly knowledge, told of other gods. Oh, why, the Egyptians have a score, the, the Greeks hundreds, the Romans thousands. If you must plead allegiance to a deity, why not one of them? Bow to another god, a different one. Why not? <laughs> yes. Why not? I am of royal blood. I'll choose my own god. Here. Let's pledge him with a toast. Which shall it be, eh? The Romans Jupiter or the Grecian Zeus? Baal of the East or the Egyptian Seth? I do not care. You choose. Your choice is mine. Then I shall name. Shall me? I dare not. The scriptures may be right, but there is only one God, almighty, supreme, mighty beyond all might. And if there is, and if I have put to death his chosen man... John was not sent by God. His headless body rots in an unmarked grave. But his spirit still lives greater and stronger than before. All that you sought to silence will not be still. All that John has prophesied is coming true. Jesus is not Elijah reborn. He is John the Baptist, risen from the dead. That is why these powers work in him. During the days that Herod, fearful and haunted, trembled in his fortress, Jesus continued his earthly mission. He hasn't slept. No. He must have loved the Baptist deeply. Andrew tells me that they were kinsmen. But no man can go on day after day without his rest. Not carrying the load that he bears, and the continual demands of the people, and now his grief for John. And the fact that Herod may strike at him next. I doubt if he fears Herod. He should. He has a following. And tyrants live in dread of men with followings. But Judas, the master is no threat to Herod. Any leader on the side of truth is a threat to tyranny. 
a danger to Tiberius, the puppets of Rome, Herod, his brothers, to Caiaphas. The master does not preach revolt. He talks of love and forgiveness. Yes, I know. But Israel will never be free to love and forgive until her people unite against Rome. Rise to a leader who will guide them, order them, command them to obey. Another tyrant? No, a king. Their own king, a king of Israel. One they will accept as a David, a Moses, a Hezekiah. This is an old, old dream. For three centuries, people have talked of it, but accomplished nothing. But it will come. Not in a year or two or three, perhaps, but when enough men are willing to die for a kingdom of their own. <laughs> I was a zealot. Pledged to restore Israel to its place among the nations of the world. For years, like all the brotherhood, I preached hate and fight and destroy. But now I have heard the master speak of love and forgiveness, and I want more than, than revenge or temporal power or the glories of this world. So do the rest of us and the hundreds that have heard him and the thousands that will. Well, perhaps you're right. Through that night and the days that followed, a great weight lay on the heart of Jesus. The death of John the Baptist meant more than the loss of a beloved kinsman. It marked the ending of the time of the messenger sent to prepare the way. Now the task, the full task, rested on the shoulders of only one, to bring the word of the kingdom to all mankind, to train the men who must carry on the work when he could no longer be with them. After the disciples had completed their first missionary journeys and rejoined Jesus, they remained with him in the lands beside the Sea of Galilee. Then the day came when he led them to new territory, toward the seaports of Tyre and Sidon on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. These areas had been preponderantly Gentile since their invasion and occupation by the legions of Alexander the Great. During three and a half centuries, their people had become pagan Grecian in religion and culture. The journey was continually interrupted as Jesus ministered to bodies and to minds, not only to those who worshiped Judaism, but to those who were scorned as Gentiles. travels had led them north and west. Now they turned eastward toward the area near Caesarea Philippi. And by two and two, the disciples spoke to the people of the district. At often recurring intervals, Jesus withdrew from all men, even the twelve, to meditate and seek guidance. Yes. Welcome. 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 Welcome back. Welcome. Did you go to the marshes? No. By the grotto of Pan. And twice as many people came as yesterday. They'd hoped to hear the master. But they stayed to hear us. Where's he? Up on the hill alone. There's something been troubling him lately. Lately? 
ever since we left Capernaum. What can it be? The people have welcomed him, opened their hearts to him. No one here has threatened him as they did in Jerusalem. Nevertheless, something weighs on him. I've seen him studying us, looking at us. Yes, so have I. As though there was something he wanted to tell us. Why should he hesitate to tell us anything? Surely he trusts us? But I still think that... Master. Master. Teacher. Master. Simon and I spoke in your name in the north. One man gave us five pieces of silver for the purse. My brother and I went to the villages on the Damascus Road. And Peter and I taught at the grotto. But it was you whom they wanted to hear. Yes, even the cities. Your name is on everyone's lips. Who do men say that I am? Well, some say that you are John the Baptist risen from the dead. Some say Elijah. Jeremiah. One of the prophets. They know not which one. But who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Pay heed to me, all of you. Say nothing of this to any man. The time is not yet come for it to be revealed. But Master, Lord, I must go again to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes. I shall be killed. No, Master, no, Master. But on the third day, I shall rise from the dead. Master, you shouldn't speak of suffering and of death. God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Get thee behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every man for what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Peter and James and John and went up on the mountain to pray. of his countenance was altered, and he was transfigured before them. And his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And behold, two men talked with him, and they were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. 
And as they watched, a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And then Jesus alone came toward them. And he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. Now it came to pass that certain of the disciples were preaching nearby. And the Master has said, Do not labor for things that do not last, for food which perishes and is no more, but work for the food that endures to life eternal. Let me throw, let me throw. Honor teachers, Aid my son. Is he ill? He is the victim of an evil spirit. And when he is in his power, he falls. His limbs are tormented. And he is flung about on the ground like a mad dog. Cast out the evil spirit. Cast it out, I beg you. Who gave you the authority to heal? You will anger the spirit. Make it destroy him. Yeah. Here he is. There is their leader. mercy on my son. He is an epileptic, and he is my only child. He suffers terribly. Often he falls into the fire, into the water. I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. How long has he had this? From childhood. If you can do anything, have pity on us. Help him. All things are possible to him who believes. I believe. Help my unbelief. Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The boy is dead. The evil spirit has killed him. couldn't we cast out the evil spirit? Because of your little faith. What truly I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move hence to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. The long journey to the north reached its conclusion. Jesus and the Twelve returned to Capernaum on the western shore of the Galilean Sea. And the time for Jesus to be received up was at hand, and he set his face toward Jerusalem. And it was the season of the Passover feasts, and the roads were thronged with the people of Israel traveling toward the holy city. What a relief watching the dust out of my throat. Never have I seen so many foot scuffers on the road. Never have I seen so many people going to the feast. I've been wondering all morning how many of them are followers of the master. 
Well, it's hard to tell. Of course, I recognized a lot from Galilee. And I saw a few from that village in Samaria. Oh, bring that one, will you? It belongs to Judas. Bring Judas's water bag? <laughs> he should be fetching for us. We followed the master before he did. I'll take it to him if it bothers you. No, it's not the fetching. It's the man. Always acting as though he looked down on the rest of us because we came from Galilee. So filled with self-importance because we let him keep the purse. Well, it's only his manner. I'm not so sure, John. Always crowding in at the master's right side, taking authority on himself. I think it's time Judas was put in his place. How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Your pardon, sir. Yes? Isn't that Jesus, the one the people call the prophet? Yes, it is. It is the Nazarene. Truly, I say to you, Everyone who has left houses, our brothers or sisters, our mother or children, our lands for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last, and the last first. Master, bless our little ones, I beseech you. No, you must not bother the master. No, Peter. Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. As they journeyed on, Jesus led the twelve apart and spoke again of the trials he would undergo in Jerusalem. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. Master. Teacher, we wish to ask a certain thing of you. What do you want me to do for you? Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left. When you come into your kingdom. You do not know what you are asking. Yes, we do, Master. We've earned the right. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? Oh, yes, Master. We are able. You will drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. By what right did the sons of Zebedee make such a demand? We've been as loyal as they. Yes, Master. Yes, we have. Come. Come to me. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them. And their great men exercise authority over them. Not so shall it be among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In Bethany, near Jerusalem, women mourners gathered in the home of Mary and Martha to grieve with them for the death of their brother Lazarus. Your brother will rise again. 
I know. In the resurrection at the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. Summon your sister. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. And when they came to the tomb where the body of Lazarus had lain for four days, Jesus bade them to remove the stone. you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I knew that thou hearest me always, but I have said this on account of the people standing by that they may believe that thou didst send me. Lazarus, come forth. Unbind him and let him go. And many who beheld believed in him, humbly and with awe. It was the month of Nisan, the beginning of the Hebrew year, when Jesus reached Bethany, close by the great city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the holy city. Jerusalem, where he had foretold his arrest, his trials, his suffering. The great temple dominated the metropolis. It was the focal point for the hordes of the devout making their annual pilgrimage to observe the week of the Passover. From east, west, north, and south they came by tens, hundreds, thousands, overflowing the city, camping outside the walls. Roman troops had been brought in from outlying posts to augment the garrison stationed at the fortress of Antonio, a grim precaution against the possibility of revolt. As was customary, Pontius Pilate, the procurator of Judea, had come to the city from his governor's mansion at Caesarea. More and more and more. Greater numbers than last year. Why don't they chant their prayers, burn their offerings in their home villages? Why must they clutter the roads, waste days on end? We ought to have more men patrolling the streets. On a sign more, if your Excellency thinks it's advisable to weaken the reserve, half a cohort. Pox Romana. Excellency? 
Coddle the conquered. Collect taxes, keep the peace. With half a cohort where a division would be too few. <sighs> I'd be glad when this week is over. There was tension in the talk of the multitude. Not of insurrection, but because of a story told, retold. Whispers of a miracle that had taken place a short distance beyond the Kidron Valley. And when they had rolled aside the great stone covering the door, the Nazarene prayed to the Lord God and commanded the dead one, Lazarus, to come from the tomb. The body sat up, and when they removed the winding claws, he was alive, living, just like you or you or, or I. Truly, this Jesus of Nazareth is a prophet, a messenger sent by God. I have heard of the wonders he has done in Galilee, but I always thought that this he was... he has done here, before witnesses. He has command over death itself. If it's true, uh, not that I doubt your word, Father, but if it is, why hasn't Jesus been brought to the temple and honored by the high priest? What does Caiaphas think of him? He's a sorcerer, a charlatan. This is a trick. This is an illusion to, to awe the gullible. But there were so many witnesses, my Lord Caiaphas. The mourners, the sisters. They all saw the dead man rise in the tomb, saw him unbound. They know that he lives. Then he never died, obviously. He pretended to be dead, laid in the tomb, in order to help a false messiah perform a false miracle. Of course, of course. That's the only possible explanation. But nearly as many witnesses saw Lazarus in death. The physician who attended him, the woman who anointed his body with oil, his friends and kinsmen who bore his corpse to the tomb. All loyal followers of Jesus? Loyal enough to lie for him? That's it. That's it. I fear not, Excellencies. Some, perhaps, but many of irreproachable character, undoubted reputation. Every time I go to the temple, I'm besieged by questions as to the source of Jesus' power, whether it comes from God or from... It comes from Satan. Satan? From the devil himself. Tell that to anyone who asks. Yes. Yes, Excellencies. A magician. A messenger from Beelzebub. When this story is spread among the people, and they believe... They won't. Oh, but they must. Coming from you, the high priest. They want to believe that death can be conquered. By good, not evil. That's what they will believe, no matter what we say or do. You should have had the Nazarene destroyed before he became too well known. Ah. Uh, How we may have to do it at a most embarrassing time. Not embarrassing, impossible. Pilate has demanded that trouble be avoided during the period of the feasts. If we should make one move against the Nazarene now, surrounded as he is by followers. But he may move on us first. Yes, he may. What do we do then? We may try prayer. Prayer? Prayer that the Nazarene practices the peace he preaches. I wonder what power he did use to raise them man. Jesus sent two of his disciples to a village opposite the Mount of Olives, saying to them, as you enter it, you will find a donkey's colt tied. Untie it and bring it. And they brought the colt to Jesus and spread their robes on it, and he sat upon it. from Galilee. The man who raised Lazarus? It is Jesus of Nazareth.
Excellency, Excellency. My Lord Kent. Well, what is it? What are the shouting? Is it a riot? The people are greeting the Nazarene. They're hailing him as king. As king? As king of the Jews. That's the temple guard. Hurry. Come. <laughs> Master, speak to the people, to the multitudes who called you king. Come. Let us return to Bethany. Coins exchanged. Land to the sacrificial altar. Oil, rare oil. Oil for the tribute to the Almighty. Coins exchanged. Coins of any land. But his heart wept within him, for those about him knew not the ways of peace. And he foresaw the day when not one stone of the great temple would be left upon another. of Jerusalem, crowded at all times, filled to overflowing during the annual feasts of the Passover. Travelers from all the lands of Israel thronged to the great temple. The mighty courts resounded to the blaring ram's horn trumpets. The smoke of burning offerings ascended from the altars. It was to this same temple that three decades before, Joseph and Mary had brought the infant Jesus for the sacred rite of dedication. It was within these vast courtyards that in his boyhood, he had impressed the scribes and the sages with his wisdom and understanding. Here he had returned in the early days of his earthly mission as an unheralded teacher, unknown except in his homeland of distant Galilee. It was through the streets leading to the temple that the people had hailed him in a sudden, spontaneous accolade, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And it was here that he had looked upon the outer courtyard, upon the vendors of sacrificial animals, the sellers of oils and incense, the changers of currency, and had turned away with tears in his eyes. On the following day, Jesus and the Twelve came from Bethany and entered the temple. Have them copy this, Shufka, with the changes I authorized. Yes, Excellency. Excellency, my Lord Cephas, the Nazarene has returned. How many are with him? Only his closest disciples, 11 or 12. Uh, where is he now? In the inner temple, praying. Huh. Excellency, what shall we do? Hmm? Do? Let him pray. 
Yesterday he had half of Judea at his back, and he turned away. And the people saw that he feared us. Now let them see that we ignore him. Yes, Excellency. Eight is all that is worth. Eight and no more. Do you think you know the value of Gentile coins better than I do? There, eight pieces. Take them or I'll call the gods. The people are curious, thoughtless, fickle. But remind them of the authority of the temple. Keep it ever before them. You shall not make my father's house into a marketplace. Is it not written? My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. But you have made it a den of robbers. Caiaphas? Here. Caius has returned. The Nazarenes in Bethany dining with his disciples, surrounded by a horde of followers. Messias mingled with them, pretended to be one of them. He reports that they're saying that Jesus is a prophet, the son of David, the Messiah of Scripture. Uh -huh. They're saying that a wealthy woman thrust into where he was seated at table and anointed his hair with rare oil, as though he were already a king. Do you think he'll lead a revolt against us? I think he has. Yesterday he entered the city to a thunder of cheers. Today he stormed the court of all nations, defied my authority, openly, brazenly. And tomorrow, tomorrow, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, they, they've changed things around since I was last here. Changed? Used to look like a stockyard. <laughs> Bullocks and goats, sheep and pigeons for sacrifices. Money changers tables over there. They were there until three days ago. New young teacher, a man from the north, drove them out single-handed. One man? One man. To be exact, that man, Jesus Bar Joseph from Nazareth in Galilee. You know he's a man of courage. Well, I wouldn't call a money changes a valiant sort of enemy. Oh, I don't mean just for baiting them, but for having the nerve to come back here. He must realize that the high priest can stand no such opposition. Uh oh, what's wrong? There go two of his closest aides. Let's stroll over and see what's happening. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We know that you are true, and do not regard the position of men, but truly teach the words of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? A very choice trap. If he says pay, the entire crowd turns against him. Don't pay, and I arrest him for treason. Well, come, teacher, answer. Should we pay them or should we not? Why put me to the test? Because of your great authority and wisdom. Show me your coin. Whose likeness and inscription is on it? Why, Caesar's. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Disgusting, contemptible. 
We should be cast out of the temple, banned from it forever. I'd make a bad situation worse. If we let him go on, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will destroy both our holy place and our nation. I fear Pilate's troops less than I fear the people. They love us little enough as it is. And less every day that they hear the Galilean. But acting against him would only inflame them. We can never justify such an act to them. That I know. You know nothing. Excellency. You do not understand it is expedient, but one man... One man should die for the people. Not that a whole nation shall perish. Agree completely, Excellency, completely. If it were not that he had so deluded... Oh, I simply have no love for him. Excellency. Oh, How is he called? Judas, Excellency. Judas Iscariot. The upper room of an inn had been prepared for the feast of the unleavened bread. My children, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall never eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Is it I, Master? Surely none of us betray you, Master. Who could it be, Master? Oh, no, Rabbi, I couldn't be. No, Master, no. It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. What you are going to do, do quickly. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the world, who dost bring forth bread from the earth. Take. Eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the world, who has created the fruit of the vine. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine 
until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Lord, why cannot I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Will you lay down your life for me? Yes, Master. Yes. Even if they all fall away, I will not. Truly I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. No, Master, no. If I must die with you, I won't deny you. We will not fail you, teacher. You know that I love you. Depend on me, master. None of us could betray you. No, no. And he went out, as was his custom, to a garden named Gethsemane. Wait here while I pray. Come with me. My soul is very sorrowful, even unto death. Remain here and watch. are possible to thee. If thou art willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Are you asleep? Master. Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Behold, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Master. Judas. 
Would you betray the sort of man with a kiss? That's the man. Please him. It was not to the temple that Jesus was taken, but to the home of Annas, where a small portion of the Sanhedrin prepared to hear him and judge him. Inside time, he was taught a lesson, flaunting all authority, starting a near riot on temple grounds. Riot? What riot? Hmm? There could have been bloodshed. The day he led that howling mob to the very gates. And he attacked the merchants, the money changers, the sellers of doves and lambs. Oh. Oh, yes. Sacrilege. There's no question about it. I'm ready to find him guilty now. There's little doubt that he's deserving of punishment. Let us, however, wait and see what the hearing develops. There have been rumors that he has set himself up as a king. An act of treason against Caesar. Our concern, of course, is not with that. Rather, with his blasphemies, the false prophecies, his attempts to mislead the people. If, however, we should learn that he is guilty of treason against Rome. Then it would be our duty to turn him over to the procurator. Stand there. Now, what have you to say of this man? Why, Most noble, noble Excellency. Excellency. I was in the court of the Gentiles, and with my own ears, I heard him say he could tear down the whole temple, all of it, in three days' time. That is not quite right, Your Excellencies. What he did say was that if the temple were destroyed, he could build another like it in three days, with his bare hands. No, oh, he said he could tear it down, not rebuild it. I was as close to him as you were. I heard what he said. Enough. You may go. waste time. These fools don't even have sense enough to agree. Nazar and I told them. Ah. Jesus of Nazareth, step forward. You have heard the statements of the witnesses. Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. You have said so. But I tell you hereafter, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Blasphemy! Why do we still need witnesses? You've heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? Guilty. Guilty on all charges. He is blasphemed. Guilty? Guilty. 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 As the day dawned, Jesus was taken to the palace where the procurator was staying. Those who escorted him, having already purified themselves for the observance of Passover rites, declined to enter the abode of a Gentile. Pilate, awakened before his accustomed hour, was in a surly mood. Good morning, Your Excellency. If a matter weren't of such urgency. Hi. We regret urgently having interfered. But it will only take a moment this of This man you've brought to me, of what is he accused? He incited the people to riot in the very courtyard of the temple. Why, he even claims to be the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. He encourages his followers to hail him as the king of all the Jews. These affairs are yours, not Rome's. Take him. Judge him according to your laws. We have, Excellency, and found him deserving of death. All we ask is your endorsement of our findings. If he were not guilty, we wouldn't have brought him here. Wait here. And Pilate questioned Jesus, seeking to find if there was truth to the charge that he had plotted to proclaim himself a king. Are you a king, then? You say I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness for the truth. 
Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Truth? What is truth? I find no fault in the man. But he has stirred up the people. Yes, he's spoken the king, the king himself. All over Judea, from here to Galilee. From Galilee? Is he a Galilean? Yes, he comes from Nazareth. Then he comes under Herod's jurisdiction, not mine. Centurion. Yes, Your Excellency. Have the prisoner taken to the Tetrarch. But Excellency, well, Excellency the guardian, you will wait if you will come to the door for a moment. And Jesus was brought before Herod. And Herod demanded that some sign or miracle be done by him. But Jesus answered him not. And the priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. And Herod and those with him treated him with contempt and mocked him. And arraying him in a tattered robe, jeering him as a pretender who called himself a king, they sent him back to Pilate. So Jesus was once more brought before the procurator. You brought the man to me as one who incites the people. I questioned him. I found no fault in him. No guilt in the things of which he was accused. No, nor did Herod. The prisoner's done nothing to merit death. I will have him chastised and then released. No! No! Whipper, you've done enough! Yes! Do away with it! Do away with it! As he was flogged, brambles were taken and woven together. at the prisoner whom the crowds had hailed as king, the guards placed a crown on his head, <laughs> a crown of thorns. You have heard how many things they have witnessed against you. They say you call yourself the son of God. Who are you? From where do you come? Why don't you answer? Don't you realize I have the power to release you or crucify you? You could have no power at all against me, except it were given you from above. Therefore, he that delivered me to you has the greater sin. that man, you are no friend of Caesar's. I bring him before you so you may know I find no fault in him. Behold! It's a man. By custom, as at each Passover, I will free a prisoner to you. Will you have me release for you the King of the Jews? What then shall I do with Jesus called Christ?
am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Release Barabbas. And upon insistence that he be crucified, Pilate delivered him to their will. gave orders that Jesus of Nazareth be put to death. And Judas of Carrion, who had betrayed him, saw him condemned. And the weight of 30 pieces of silver grew intolerable. And a man tormented, he went to the temple for the last time. I have saved it betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? See to it yourself. King of the Jews read the sign. And it was on Golgotha at the third hour of the day they crucified him. While he hung on the cross, those who persecuted him came to mock him. You're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You are the Christ. Save yourself. Save us. You not fear God? You who are condemned? You and I are condemned justly. We have received the due rewards of our deeds. But this man, he has done nothing wrong. Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Verily I say unto you, today you shall be with me in paradise. As the hours wore on, the skies began to darken. He still lives.
woman, behold thy son. Behold thy mother. By the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. The seventh hour passed, and the eighth. My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me? Next, the begging audience. The man Joseph, an honorable counsel of Arimathea. Well, speak up. What is it you wish? The body of the man Jesus, that I might give it decent burial. Is he dead already? Yes, Excellency. Are you related to him? No, Excellency. One of his followers who cried him king? No, Excellency. But you are a counselor and a Jew. Yes. Then what interest have you in the man? Your high priest found him guilty of sacrilege and blasphemy. Your people demanded his death. Not all the people, only a few. Not our chosen leaders, but those Rome appointed. You speak with great daring. I speak what I believe, Excellency. The Nazarene was a kind and gentle man, a learned teacher, a man of truth. Such men I honor as best I can. I have a tomb, my own, new and unused. If your excellency would permit, I... Let him have the body. Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus to a new tomb, hewn from solid rock. And two women watched, Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, and Mary, who came from Magdala. And the chief priests came once more to the procurator. The man was condemned and executed. What do you want now? Sir, we remember while that imposter was still alive, he said, after three days, I will rise again. <laughs> do you think that he can? Certainly not. But he has deluded the masses before, and his followers may have plans to steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. 
And what do you suggest that I should do? Order that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Centurion, order an officer and men enough for the task. Now you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. Our most sincere appreciation, Your Excellency, and that of my Lord Caiaphas. made secure to the satisfaction of those who had demanded it. And a guard was placed by it to watch over it. Better go no farther. You, you mean you stay here with your men? Orders, I thought you knew. No. Caiaphas idea. He assumes all soldiers can be bribed. Well, I've done harder jobs for the Empire. Me too. More than I foresaw when I received my first pilum and gladius. That's a long time back for both of us. Long time. A lot of marches, good many scars. <laughs> You know something? Mm. Life on a farm of one's own might not be so unbearable in Tuscany or Umbria. Or well, the valley of the Po. Pull yourself together. You tremble, that was all. No, no, the figure. What figure? Uh, I, I don't know. One with shining robes so bright, I, I was dazzled, then I... Pilot will never believe this. You'll have to. But all your men tell the same story. Get them ready. I'll go with you. Perhaps I should leave one or more of my men here. To guard what? An empty tomb? Anything suspicious? Pairs of soldiers patrolling the streets. None so much as looked up. I'll stand guard for a while. You'd better get some sleep. Thank you, Thomas. I couldn't. I thought I couldn't either. But once I'd stretched out and closed my eyes. I close my eyes, I see too many things. I know. I see them too. You do? The hills of Galilee, waters of Gennesaret, the way the master used to smile. I see men in the courtyard. Courtyard of Annas. Why? Do you remember the last time we dined with the master? I'll never forget it. How he said you will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd. And the sheep will be scattered. Yes. And I told him that even if all the others deserted, I would not. You remember what he said then? I, I'm not sure I recall it. He said this very night, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me three times. And I promised him that even if I had to die with him, I would never deny him. 
You tried to prevent his arrest. You were the only one who followed when they took him away. Yes, I followed. To the courtyard of Annas. The gate was open, and I went in and mingled with the guards. So you told us. It was a daring thing to do. I didn't tell you all that happened. One of the women's servants brought wine for the guards. She looked at me and she said, you were with the Nazarene in the temple. And I said she was mistaken, that I didn't know the man. Later, when she came back for the empty cups, she looked at me again. She said to the guards, he is one of them. And again, I lied, saying I, I didn't know a rabbi named Jesus. Not far away, a rooster crowed. And then the guards came to me. I said they could tell by my northern accent that I was from Galilee. And I said, may a curse fall upon me if I know him of whom you speak. And the words were hardly out of my mouth when the cock crowed a second time. The sky is beginning to lighten. What was that? The women must be awake. You're not going out. But it's dangerous. You might be seen, recognized. Whatever the errand, let me go for you. We go on a mission for women, to the tomb. No. No, you mustn't. This is the third day. My son's body must be anointed. We'll go with you. Wait till I wake the others. No, Peter. If you insist. I wrapped my son in his first swaddling clothes. Now I must. Be very careful. We hear there are soldiers guarding the tomb. I know. They may have orders to arrest all followers of the Nazarene. He is dead, Peter. What can they do to us now? Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, the women went unto the tomb, bearing spices that they might anoint him. I wonder who will roll away the stone for us. Perhaps the soldiers will. Look!
They've taken it away. Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. told all that they had seen and heard to the apostles, but their words seemed to the men an idle tale, and they did not believe them. It's impossible, impossible. They don't know what they're saying. They're worn out, tired. We should never have let them go without us. The shock of finding the body stolen, the tomb empty. If it is empty. Well, they couldn't have been mistaken about that. Hardly. They've been under a great strain, grief-ridden, sleepless. They thought they heard the voice, but they must have seen the empty sepulcher. Perhaps. Well, they may have gone to a wrong tomb by mistake. Always the doubter. Is it a sin to be certain? I'll go to the tomb. I'll go with you, alone. There's no use of endangering two men. If only what the women thought they heard could come true. Peter went alone unto the tomb. Looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Wondering at what had happened, he went away. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, they were together except for Thomas, who was not with them. The authorities are seeking us, they'll be guarding every gate. And all the roads to Galilee. Well, we could go one or two at a time, mingle with the crowds going home from the feasts. And if one was caught, they'd comb the city till all the rest were found. Yes. No, we'll stay here until they relax their vigilance. Oh, oh I agree. I don't know. No, yes. I still think that we ought to Well, that's my suggestion. If any of you have a better plan, peace be with you. A week passed, the hordes of visitors left the city, and Thomas went to nearby Bethany to tell Lazarus of the apostles' plans to return to Galilee. Martha, Lazarus, a guest is coming. Welcome, Thomas, a thousand welcome. Thank you. How good to see you, my friend. My house is yours. We've been so worried about you and the others. They're in no danger? They're alive? Come, sit down. I'll get you some honeyed wine. Just a cup of cool water will be fine. Now, the others are safe and in good health. Except for Judas. You heard that he'd taken his own life? We heard. But why did he betray the master? Why? I don't know. None of us could guess. Thank you. More? Please. It's a hot and dusty walk from the city. Thomas. Yes? For five, six days, we've been hearing whispers, rumors that Jesus... That Jesus is not dead. That he's risen from his grave as he prophesied. Are they true? Is that what you've come to tell us? There are those who say they have seen him, spoken to him. Then it is true. I... I don't know. Well, who are the people? Where did they see him? Cleophas and his friends swear they walked with the master on the road to Emmaus. Cleophas is a man of honor. Who are the others? Peter, Andrew, all the others who've traveled with him these past three years. 
Oh, I was not there when he appeared to them. I, I didn't see him. But you can't doubt them. Not your friends, his disciples. All my life, since I was a small boy, I've been called skeptic, doubter. Unless I have seen or, or touched or heard for myself. I... But you saw him return life to my dead body. You heard him say that it was by the power of God. You know it was done for me. How could you doubt that it could be done for the Master? I want to believe. I want to with all my heart. And yet... Thomas, come in. We've been waiting for you. Did everything go well in Bethany? Yes, I gave our farewells to Lazarus and his sisters. Told them of our plans. Good. Lazarus wanted to come back with me. You didn't let him. No, I... I told him that his name was too closely linked with the masters, that he should stay away from the city. You did well. He insisted he's coming early tomorrow, with the merchants bringing their goods to the markets. Why should he take such a risk? Yes, why? He, he cannot wait to hear from you, all of you, Everything you can tell him of, of what you saw. Well, why wasn't he satisfied with what you told him? Surely that should be enough. Because I could only say, they have seen, oh, but I have not. Well, but if you convinced him, you know the master has risen, lives again. I could not say I know. Unless I see in his hand the prints of nails and, and place my finger in the marks of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I... I will not believe. Peace be with you. Lord, Thomas, come to me. Put your finger here and see my hand. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. My Lord, and my God. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.